Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wolf for Programming. Today I want to talk about what I use for a home media center. I've gone through a couple different devices that I've used. In the past, I typically used a Raspberry Pi with Libre Elect and Kodi. But there's some limitations to using a Raspberry Pi. The playback is usually pretty good, but with the Raspberry Pi 4 in particular, I've had a lot of bad luck with uh, green flashes during my videos, and it's kind of distracting. Also, some formats didn't play very well, and the whole thing seemed a little bit uh, hacky. And hacky's good, and my current setup is pretty hacky too. Um, but I did want to explore a couple different options, and what I ended up settling on was Android, and in particular Lineage OS with N2+. Plus. But I will talk about two devices um, that I had to compare. So this was another option, and this is about for the like the best box was about fifty dollars on AliExpress and I picked this device which is called X96 Max because the chipset was listed as possibly supported under Core Elect so that I could run an open source operating system on it <clears throat> but when I actually bought it it took like two months to get here and I tried to put Core Elect on it um, it, it didn't work and the reason is is it probably had some kind of newer firmware and so in order for me to put an open source operating system on it I would have to first find a firmware and replace it I haven't found the firmware yet so <laughs> basically uh, don't buy this and um, instead I'm going to have to recommend the Odroid N2 Plus and let's go take a look at that so here we have the Odroid N2 Plus. This is a pretty expensive device, and you're going to spend at least $200 to have it fully set up. And for that price, you could probably buy a used x86 computer. But there's a couple advantages to using an Android device in a media center. And we'll get to those in a minute when we explore the UI. But I want to talk a little bit about my setup here. Let's put this old device up. So I've got a couple single board computers back here that do various things. I've got two Raspberry Pi 4s, um, and those are doing various web server duties. And I also have a NVIDIA Jetson Nano over there in the corner. So basically, I've got my hard drive attached to my NVIDIA single board computer. And I also have something what's called NVIDIAS. So not to be confused with NVIDIA, it's an NVIDIA board, but it's running a software program called NVIDIAS. And what NVIDIAS is, is an alternative client front end for YouTube. And um, when I say front end, it's kind of a little bit of front end and back end. So it's actually running a Postgres database, and it's running the software NVIDIAS, which is open source. It's written in some, I think, crystal language, kind of a weird language nobody uses, but whatever. Um, so I can create YouTube playlist and keep that data stored myself. So basically, I've got Raspberry Pis and single board computers doing server duties, and then I have the Odroid N2 Plus, which is kind of the heart of this video, doing my media consumption. And this thing is so cool because it's got um, it's got a bunch of cool stuff on here. It's got an IR signal, and I haven't got this to work in Android, at least not the open source Android images. Um, but it does work in Core Elect images. So if you just want a Kodi device, you can put Kodi on here and this comes pre-set up with like Xbox remote and MCE remote. I've tested that as working. So it's got an EMC module and I could really only get the 32 gigabyte module. I think the 16 gigabyte module but that was available but that's too small for me. So it's got some USB 3 ports on the back. Um, it doesn't come with Wi-Fi. I purchased a Wi-Fi adapter overall around $200 and what we get is a very nice 4K capable playback device running open source software and a nice web browser. So let's go over to the UI and check out some of the things that it can do. So for controlling we've got several different options. I have a USB 3 hub over there and on that I have an FLIRC adapter so that I can use commands from my universal TV remote. I also have this remote which I've showed in another video on my channel which is pretty cool. It's got an air mouse and it's got a keyboard so that we can control it like a computer. And for the rest of this video I think I'll show this. We also have an Xbox One controller over there in the corner and it actually works pretty good for controlling some things. It doesn't have a mouse pointer but we'll show some games running in a minute and it runs pretty well. So. Uh, it's Android, and the uh, the main advantage for using Android is the ability to run multiple apps simultaneously and launch them through the Android menu. 
So here we have Cody, and we'll go ahead and demonstrate a 4K movie playing in the background. Okay, so I originally wanted to show an actual 4K movie, but when I went to upload it to YouTube, I got a copyright detection notice, and uh, the movie studio was going to run ads on this video, and uh, even though there's pretty much no chance of this ever getting monetized, uh, I'm not going to do that. So. Here's a 4K H.265 sample, which seems to come from an open source project from Bucks Bunny, which everyone seems to show when they show these. So you can see it does play 4K content fine. Everything works as expected. And so because we are in Android, we have a web browser, and that is my favorite thing um, about, about this device. So we can flick up, we've got apps, we've got F-Droid. So let's take a look. At, and this is my NVIDIA instance. And this is running on my own computer. So I get to control what I see. I don't have to rely on any Google algorithms. And I can build and save playlists right here on my database and on Google's database. It also doesn't have advertisements. I don't mind advertisements that much. I, I really just don't like YouTube messing <laughs> Um, controlling what I can and cannot see. By doing that, they're basically controlling what I, you know, how you're thinking. So, YouTube is still a great platform uh, to discover new content, uh, to host content, but um, Nvidia's is a great option for privacy-minded people. While it works, I'm sure that YouTube is going to find a way to get rid of it eventually, but right now it works pretty good. It's very similar to NewPipe on Android if you've ever used NewPipe. And since this is a Android device, we could install NewPipe if we wanted. No emulation, no containers, none of that. Let's take a look at another video sharing website, a popular blockchain based site, which I won't name in case YouTube's algorithm tries to mess it up. And it plays just fine. So. So web browsers running on, they do have a Linux distribution for the Odroid M2 Plus, but the hardware acceleration is just not quite there. And you really need GPU acceleration for anything to work on, on these boards. The processors do run at like two gigahertz. And we can see that that really helps emulation a lot. Really cool. Really cool, right? So the last thing I'm gonna show you is uh, a little bit of emulation and I've got RetroArch installed here and we'll show a little bit of Zelda Majora's Mask. Okay so here I've got the newest Xbox controller hooked up over USB to the N2 Plus and I'm going to show you a little bit of emulation to close out the video. So we're going to load core, we're going to do N64, we're going to load content, we're going to Scroll down to the SD card, and I've got a ROMs folder. Sorry about the autofocus. And we're going to go to Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. And we can save and load state. There's a little bit of pixelation there while the emulation checks it emulation catches up. So I was absolutely really impressed with the N64 emulation um, because every time I've tried this on a Raspberry Pi device, be it the Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3, 4, it just never could do, could just never do Majora's Mask correctly. And uh, this board does it amazingly. So, I, I tried running GameCube games and none of the ones I tried would run at full speed. So maybe there's a build out there, maybe you could overclock, maybe there's some settings you could do to get full speed GameCube emulation on some titles, probably the lower end ones, but I wouldn't buy this device with the intention of playing GameCube games. For me, I was looking for a coded media center where I could also go to a web browser sometimes. My TV doesn't have a web browser. It's got Netflix, it's got Amazon. I didn't need any of those smart TV apps. I just wanted a web browser and I wanted uh, my Kodi Media Center. And this thing does great. So that's it everyone. Wolf for Programming uh, for Media Center. What do I recommend? Right now I'm recommending the N2 Plus. If you want a low powered device 
that doesn't take up a lot of space. For the price point, you could buy uh, just a regular Intel computer, uh, but those are going to use almost always going to use more power, and um, they're going to take up more room, and you're going to end up paying a lot. So, for me, if you're looking at the Android market for a Android TV box that is FOSS friendly. The only one that I could really come across right now that I can recommend is going to be the N2 Plus. It's expensive, but it's going to be able to check most of the boxes for uh, people who are into open source and privacy. Okay, that's it everyone. Have a great day.